All right, and we're back. Finally, a little bit of a hiatus there. Uh, today, I'm very excited to introduce our very own Ryan Jacobs, who's with us in the studio today. Ryan is our R&D lead in the lab here at Leaf Organics, uh, which is essentially where we make products from the ground up. So all the flavor testing happens in there, capsule fill weights, the, the full nitty gritty R&D process. So we have the man himself who is in that lab on a day-to-day -day basis with his full R&D team now, which is very exciting now that you very have a well-staffed R&D team after We're a while. Beehive now. <laughs> um, so before we kind of get into, you know, today's episode, I just kind of want to take a few minutes to kind of talk about your background um, your transition throughout Leaf because you've been with Leaf for well over three years, like close to three years now, right? Uh, three years today. I three years today. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. So we got yeah. a little anniversary yeah. <laughs> special episode today. So that's exciting. Um, so let's jump into that. Uh, while we were kind of just sitting here talking about like your background and everything like that, you have a biotechnology background. I do. So let's talk, let's talk Ryan Jacobs first okay. before we get into this. So let's talk about that background and then pretty much how you just ended up here at Leaf Labs and then we'll go into your transition. Sure. So majored in biotechnology from CSUN, um, I, which is basically applied genetics. Um, so it's not really, <laughs> it doesn't really fit into this industry too much, but <laughs> it is uh, still, you know, get a good technical um, right. Baseline, basically. So um, right out of college, I went into clinical work, um, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a good fit for me. Yeah. Um, so then just on a whim, I got into, just took a entry level position here. And then uh, from there, just started in QC, as you know. Um, yeah, because you were you were working with Celeste when you first started off yeah. in QC, right? Yeah. So what was kind of like the the role in QC that you played in while you were over there? It was more a lot of administrative work. Okay. Um, it but it did give a very broad kind of QC education, if you will. Yeah. Like reg on the regulatory side, quality side, um, and then once uh, once Mike left, then there was an opening in R&D. Yep, but so so let's talk about the QC, because for me, you know you know how I am <clears throat> with like learning different departments and then what you can learn from those departments and how it can better apply to the job that you're in now. Oh, sure. So let's kind of talk about like the advantages of, so you have the biotech background, you hit the ground running uh, in QC administrative work here at LEAF. Let's talk about the advantage or some of the advantages that you kind of found as that led into, you know, the, the career path in, in R&D. Sure. So you get it, it makes your it makes R&D work a lot easier if you it makes it easier on the back end. Right. So it's it might not make it easier in front, but once the product is completed and you want to make sure that you've done it correctly, that's really a big advantage there. Yeah. For give me it takes a lot of headaches away from you yeah so can you can you give us a, a few examples of that uh sure so um learning how to read documents yep. the doc various documents you get um from different claims to non-gmo to allergen free that kind of thing um prevents a lot of problems in on the backside and do you think that that kind of equips you more like when you when you go into an r d project having that QC background because sometimes like there isn't, you know, just because I'm on the sales side and, and then we're the ones kind of updating you guys on like the, the R and D project. Right. And sometimes there can be little missing bits of information when you go into that project. So do you think that like having that background of being able to make sure that you have like a stop check system, right. Before you kind of really dig into that R and D project, before you start flavoring, it kind of gives you some more in-depth questions to ask about the parameter definitely so it's especially even on the organic side like wanting something organic and you're able to see that you know it might not work with the formula um it helps you answer the que answer better qualifying questions to sales yeah absolutely so you were in so you, you've been in r d for a good amount of time now mm -hmm. so you were in r d um, you know, flavoring, encapsulation, flowability on our encapsulation machines and everything like that. And then we kind of spearhead into the now R&D lead. What was that transition like for you to go from building something on like a day-to-day -day basis of flavoring to now kind of like overseeing 
the rest of product development and R and D and sure. making sure everybody else is kind of like just working within that that ecosystem. It's it was it was a rough transition. Really, <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it was uh, so it was hard to kind of go from being the guy that puts the flavor together to the guy that is now coaching. Yeah, in a way. So it's it was kind of a rough transition because you know you start as like a worker bee and now you're. Yeah. And now you're the leader, so it's it's kind of it was it's kind of a rough transition, um, especially because you're you're as a lead, your goals are now different. Yeah. Um, when you're flavoring, you just want to make make sure it's tastes good. You know, it tastes good. And yeah. It's, it's going to market well. Whereas as a lead, you kind of have to make sure that the flavor that you create is essentially responsible. Yeah. You know, like, can they, can we afford this? Can we, is this going to be stable once it's, once it's packaged? Minimum order quantities as well kind of like play like a huge role in that. Because I think that like, as your time now from, from R and D to R and D lead, would you say that like a lot more business, like development opportunities have kind of come into your job description now than they did before? Yes. So it's, it's a definite attitude change. Yeah. Um, and you're kind of change your perspective, um, when you approach a project. Um, and it's, it's, it's a rough transition it really is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now you have like these different ways cause to really like the way you would go about a project, right? Like maybe previously it would be, okay, I'm just going to make this taste the best that it can to the best of my ability to now being in an R and D lead where you've had to be hands on and hands off at times just because of a rapid growth rate and having like what over 140 R and D tickets at once yeah. at one, what was that like uh, last month? Uh, 160 today, 160 Actually, today. Yeah. And so, Let's kind of talk about like, okay, when I was in R and D, this is how I would typically approach a project. And now as an R and D lead, when you do have to get back in there for the times that you do, mm-hmm. how's that thought process? Oh, it's way different. Yeah, yeah it's way different. So <laughs> it's it, it actually it makes it it makes it more difficult to kind of go back because especially now that you know kind of your your own restrictions. Yeah, that you can't just throw whatever in there and expect it to not cause problems later right um that's that's why i kind of think that like in person r&d for me i think is is a huge moment right where like you can bring the brand in you can bring the customer in you can bring their team in and then they can kind of just like sit down with us and kind of hear about that right because it's like for them you know flavor marketing the formulation all of that stuff is at the forefront of launching a product and bringing something to fruition from you know the concept that they have in their head of how they want it to look like sure the ingredients in there but then sometimes you have ingredients that are super bitter Mm -hmm. super earthy Mm -hmm. or metallic etc so how has that kind of changed for you because you and i have done plenty of projects together with in-person clients yeah when you were in r&d now being in that r&d lead position like what, what's been some of the better tricks of the trade of approaching somebody of just understanding from an R and D technical level about bringing their project to life? So I, I do prefer in, in person. Yeah. I mean, you know that. Yeah. Uh, cause you get, you really get a feel for the client Yep. and you get a few, get to see them right in front of you and then you can explain to them, oh, it's bitter because of this or it's yeah. earthy because. There's a lot of a lot of mushrooms or herbs in there. And yeah, obviously it's gonna taste. Well, because that's that's where like a lot um, of like body language and tone. Yes, comes into play too, right? Like you, they're they're able to see you, they're able mm-hmm. to see the demeanor, and just be like, hey, this is the place that I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. I understand the place that you're coming from, so let's bridge that gap to be able to bring this thing. Yeah, and that's that's the ultimate goal, you know, to really help the client develop their product. But you know, not having that bridge is you know, kind of a big hurdle to, yeah, to get over. Um, but once you, you know, once you get a good feel for the client, you're, you're off and running. Yeah, no, it it plays a a, a huge part. And I think that that's why, like one of the reasons that we're so open to that is to bridge that gap Mm -hmm. with the client, right? Like we're, we're relationship builders. We help, you know, build uh, business portfolios, product portfolios, things like that, um, with our clients to ultimately ensure their success and our success. 
So that's that's the main goal, and you guys play you know a crucial role in that because if it doesn't taste good, like we're not going to be able to yeah <laughs> just make yeah, it move yeah, off the shelf. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, but there's always there's always give and take too. Um, in terms of like a formulation yeah. for, for that product conce- conception. So that's why I think like it's, you know, I, I love having people in to be able to work with like your guys' team, obviously over the past couple of months. Yeah, it's been... That's been a little yeah. <laughs> thrown <laughs> off. Um, but I'm really excited about getting getting back into that. I think that you're, you're able to make a lot of headway. So that being said, let's kind of talk about like some of the some of the ways that somebody can really go about creating a a project from a, just a concept to fruition in terms of like things that they should just keep in mind right like especially when it comes to comes to flavor so typically this is what you get mm-hmm. right so this is primarily what the end customer only sees yeah, they don't see the back end work, the the weighing of each individual raw material, creating mm-hmm. that base, going through different citric acid, malic acid, tartaric acid levels, sweetener and flavors. So sometimes for the brand as well, because they come from a marketing background mm-hmm. or just a, a sales background, e-commerce, MLM, whatever the case may be, what are some pointers that you can kind of give to, you know, brands out there about going at an R&D project and working hand in hand with whoever manufacturing R&D team mm-hmm. and utilizing them properly. So, I think I think with any project product, you have to really understand your market. You have yeah. to understand who you're selling to. Um, if you are selling to the health conscious like like this one, um, you probably want uh, you want a combination of taste and function, but you're taste is going to kind of suffer with more herbal yeah, ingredients. Yeah, absolutely. As in this. Um, I think if you're looking to go in more of the, um, you know, pre-workouts or BCAAs, uh, you're looking more flavor forward. Um, and I think it's, well, it's kind of controversial, but I think f- flavor's king. Yeah. Um, if you're, that's that's what's going to sell this product is the flavor. Yeah, and, and I mean that's that's different depending on like the markets because sure. we've seen some some projects that do very very well that necessarily don't taste the best, but that's because they've carved out their niche. Sure, they have found their demographic. They've drawn them in with like research data points, you know, that maybe just the overall aesthetic of the product, but then also being transparent. Like for me, it's it's like if it doesn't taste the best, don't try to sell it like it does because yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because yeah. because then you're just kind of setting up like the customer for failure, right? They're yeah. they're gonna get hyped up, then they're gonna try it, and they're gonna be like, "Wait a minute, what?" Mm-hmm. Now it may be best to the ability of the formulation, and that's yeah, that's that's exactly that's exactly the point. Like, I mean, we can we can make you a uh, an herbal product, but it's gonna taste like herbs, yeah. No matter what, <laughs> like it's there's not a lot we can you know we can we can make whatever taste like watermelon, but yeah, you know, it's still going to taste like watermelon and herbs. So, I mean, yeah, that's this there's so many like back-end workings that go into creating yeah. that finished product, right? So, I think the the other one that you're also kind of responsible for working on as well as like capsules. Sure. Right? So, like typically you you have a you have a bottle or you have a small jar like this one, you have your 60 count, 90 count, mm-hmm. whatever kind of count capsules that you have in there. Let's talk about that process a little bit and, and how fun that one is. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of kind of how I mentioned that being a lead is much more difficult. <laughs> uh, so you're, this is another one of the situations where your goals change. So you're like the, the client's goal is to, you know, have a nice label and have yep. uh, all organic excipients, et cetera, et cetera. The difficulty is, is it's it's not going to be efficient on the machine, and that's where I have to come in and say, you know, let's try to reformulate this to make it both meet the client's label claim and let us run efficiently on the machine. Yeah, which has been <laughs> yeah. And how many? Uh, but but what's crazy though is like how many how many multiple processes can go into that when like somebody really does want like look I want no magnesium stearate. Mm-hmm. I want no silica. Yeah. I want no silicon dioxide. Sure. Or MCC, which is simply just plant cellulose. Mm-hmm. So 
you can have just a nightmare of a project mm -hmm. running on the machine, right? Typically, like with our encapsulation machines, you can do 100,000, 90,000 capsules an hour if you have a good working flowable mm -hmm. capsule, which typically has those excipients that we just yeah. named, the MCC, max stearate, and silicon dioxide. Yeah. As to where going something where you remove that, mm -hmm. you can now drop below 40% efficiency. Yeah. On 20, the machine, 30,000 units. Yeah, which is where we typically see that run rate of twenty to thirty thousand capsules per hour. Yeah, and if you're doing a massive fifty thousand bottle order of something like it's, that, it takes a long time. Right, yeah. but then you can also run into <clears throat> further problems like that between whether you know friction starts to build up on the machine. Exactly, um, friction starts to build up. Um, there can actually be equipment damage, um, which. Is it's unfortunate, but it's kind of it is what it is. Nature of the business for us, yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, it uh, it's it's you we we you got to strike that balance, I think, between a functionality and you know and productivity. Yeah, and I mean, it definitely does make a difference again when like you can have those like in person conversations, like exactly. it, you know, bringing the R and D yeah. team in alleviating the salesperson from kind of like that explanation right because yeah. it's like our our job title is sales but ultimately mm -hmm. we care about bridging that gap for the client as well between yeah. marketability profitability for them but then also just making sure that like leaf is running efficiently and healthy as well because exactly they may not understand in terms of like a lead time like cool like if we remove those excipients you're looking at a potential longer production run time exactly um and it's yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but I mean we can we're able to do it. It's just you like you said, lead times. Yeah. So so between like you know, kind of like where your transition. I mean, three years now. That's mm -hmm. that's awesome. What's kind of been like your favorite part about the R and D process? Yeah. Uh, it's so what what really attracted me to R and D itself was the creativity. Yeah. Like, I mean you can go almost any other industry and you will you'll just go and you'll do your job but here you get to do your job in your way you get yeah. to be creative you get to be um you get to actually create a product that you see like you can see the product on the shelf at target or wherever yeah and it's 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 a really it's a it's a cool feeling yeah like the, like seeing product. something that's kind of like tangible right yeah yeah so it's like okay i flavored this uh, project gets done. Next thing you know, you can be in, you know, Target or even Amazon. Mm -hmm. Kind of like seeing it up on Amazon, right? And or like use. Yeah, it's yeah. Reviews. What other people think of your flavor? Yeah, it's it's, it's cool. It, yeah, it's a very very cool experience to be able to kind of create something that does become tangible that ultimately ends up affecting like a lot of positivity in people's lives. Like, how does that feel for you? Oh, it feels great. Yeah, it feels great. Like, and not only like not only their lives. Like, it's it's my team gets to be creative too. Yeah. And it's 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 a really cool uh, it's a really cool feeling. So I, I would kind of say just just like um, in terms of context behind that, right? Like one of the one of the doctors that like I personally work with, um, very very hard formulations because it's it's a very like in depth process. His research is like second to none. He deals with a lot of people that just have massive digestive issues. Mm -hmm. So certain sweeteners are out of the picture, sure. like no stevia. No stevia. Sometimes no Lohan. Yeah. And we have to kind of like work around that. But when you get to work on something like that, you do flavor it and then it gets out there and, you know, the ordering thousands of units of this to it like pretty much just induce like positive change in somebody's life to where they had certain aspects of their diet missing yeah. that are now kind of completed. Yes. Because definitely because of all these other products that weren't able to take so I mean that's another like mm -hmm. angle of like your guys's job that you get to play a role mm -hmm. in as well yeah it, and that's that's I think what kind of the culture that we have at this company is yeah. you know just making people's lives better instead of you know doing it all for money yeah it's and it's that's that's another cool well well it's also just kind of because of like the stigma. <laughs> that like dietary supplements have in general? Like, do you get a lot of comments from like family or friends mm -hmm. or anything like that about like, oh, you work in dietary supplements? Isn't, Isn't that like- just snake oil? Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So t t tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> what do they know, right? No. Uh, so, um, no, yeah, so it's, it, there is a bit of a, of, of a taboo behind it. Um, I, I think 
I, 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 I'm not in it for them. I think it's, it's mainly for um, changing people's lives for the better. I, yeah. And I think um, if I'm able to do that, then that's great. Yeah. You know? No, no, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. I think that that's definitely like how, how our team and how our company kind of like, that's a massive responsibility. Yeah. Like, and, it, and it's an uphill battle because, you know, it, there, there are some top of the line, amazing other contract manufacturers out there. Mm-hmm. And then you have some ones where you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we won't go too much into that side, but, but for us to be able to kind of like shoulder that responsibility, caring about the end consumers, well-being, enhancing their life to, you know, where, where you can completely see changes. I mean, some of the sleep products that like you and I have worked on, for instance, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you know, restless leg syndrome is a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Lack of sleep right now is absolutely insane. There's been like about stress. a, a stress close to stress. like, we'll just yeah. round it out. Yeah. Like a 20% increase in dietary supplement sales for products that contain melatonin. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that that's, you know, we're trying to push that image company forward of about affecting positive change in people's lives on a day-to-day basis. Definitely. Definitely. And I think it's, I think that's the right way to go. I mean, not only from a business standpoint, but as just, you know, the human, the human aspect Yeah. of it. So do you have any type of projects that between like pre-workout protein, BCAA, whatever it is, like something that you like personally, anytime it comes into the R and D lab that you're like, yes, I want that one. So, (laughs) My my team kind of thinks I'm a little bit nuts on it, but I I, I, I like vegan proteins. Okay, I do. That's a little Only different. Only because <laughs> yes. So now hear me out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, this is mainly just because it's they're they're difficult. Yeah. They they have a very clear expectation. Clients do of what they want their product to taste like, and it's 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 they're very difficult to flavor. But it's it's kind of the challenge that um, kind of appeals because I think we can really corner, we can really if we develop ourselves, we can kind of corner that market. No, absolutely. I mean, if you have like a sector of the industry that is known for not being able to taste good, mm-hmm. and you are able to flip the script on that and make something that typically doesn't taste good, mm-hmm. then it it's a game changer. Yeah. Um, And I think that like I literally had a a client email me last night and I just kind of like chuckled because like they're like, hey, we want to launch a vegan protein. So here you go. Um, Mm -hmm. We want to launch a vegan protein. We've tried about 12 different brands. We hate them all except this one. And in my head, I just kind of had to chuckle because I had to like kind of keep it to myself. But we actually produce yeah that product yeah so in my head i'm like now because of client confidentiality i am gonna have to check with that company if it's okay that like hey is it okay if i let them know that like this is something we manufacture because we do have a good relationship with them good people um but i just thought it was funny (laughs) like that's 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 a huge testament to like feeling yeah yeah Yeah. to like to like what we do um but i also think that like in terms of that particular sector one of the people that i think are going to change the game on that is definitely like that that pisan protein source for pea protein so that stuff is great stuff oh my god so we did uh for one of my clients we did a chocolate peanut butter one the other day um mm-hmm. so naturally flavored naturally sweetened we used that uh the peanut butter powder mm-hmm. and it was just like we're yeah knocking it out of the park oh, yeah. <laughs> I, and I need that feedback yeah uh, it's like, so because we, we did another one that was kind of interesting as well that i haven't really seen it wasn't one of the other flavors banana bread banana bread i think there was a cookie dough uh i can't remember the other one we did something we did something pretty unique for this particular yeah. client and like another flavor so i mean yeah. like how does how does that feel when like you not only do you have a challenge in pea protein in general but when they yeah. give you like an obscure flavor like that it's it's uh i i, I welcome the challenge yeah I do. it's like it's uh so it's it's a lot of fun especially when you can own that you can yeah own that uh kind of that flavor system and yeah it's uh so hey you can go you know Hey, I made a uh, a peach flavored, a peach rings flavored vegan protein. Yeah, 
it's, that's never you know you don't see too many of that yeah all, so you have all of these different angles and like obstacles that you kind of have to face on that point mm -hmm. between like efficiency profitability moqs on, on like if we're bringing in a new flavor like mm -hmm. say this project has like if you if you go through with this flavor it only needs 10 kilos but then the moq is 50 kilos like that's so you have that other obstacle in there as well yeah but then another one that we haven't really touched on either is kind of like dispersibility yeah how fun is that on powder projects <laughs> uh <laughs> it's not really <laughs> uh yeah so that's it's definitely a struggle um it's another one of those client expectations um i think getting that feedback yeah. from from the client when we send out samples is invaluable yeah um so yeah so and you also have to kind of realize that this is the formula that you that you want and if if it's if one of the materials in there happens to be insoluble we can have that discussion then do you want to reduce that material do you want to get rid of it entirely do you want to make it make any other adjustments off the top of your head do you have like you know two to three ingredients that like when it comes to solubility is just for powder like a no-go uh there's I, I think actually <laughs> pea protein in general yeah does kind of separate um after a while but i think once um once once you're you realize that this is the nature of the product it kind of becomes um expected yeah anyway. uh i know um magnesium certain magnesium <laughs> oh, yeah, know, that. <laughs> know uh, that one really separates um and sinks to the bottom um and then um herbs yeah herbs do um anything powder in a in a drink is going to separate um we prefer extracts yeah um obviously you know that um but yeah and then yeah just herbs are just a rough one so switching gears a little bit yeah the one thing that i'm excited about on the market of your three-year anniversary mm -hmm. and a part of the facility that you're going to be able to utilize in the next couple of weeks how big of a game changer is that going to be for you guys oh it's about time <laughs> and uh so yeah that 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 conference room is getting kind of it's getting cramped yeah in there so Especially, but but i mean you've worked in you've worked in some tiny i've worked in smaller yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> um especially with our our full when we're at now at our full team yeah it's 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 becoming we need to shed yeah you know we need to shed our exo but you're getting ready to move into kind of like An actual, the top tier yeah, yeah. like yeah. you know <clears throat> r&d lab yeah um just to be able to stretch out be able to find things yeah would be it would be good <laughs> So I mean that's that's going to be a um, game changer in and of itself. So let's let's yeah. talk about that a little bit sure. and some of the things that it's also going to add cuz that's that's going to lead into our pilot room, yes. other capabilities and everything like that. So walk us Very through. Very excited. Very through. excited for the pilot room. Uh so our our pilot room, as you know, um is a uh it's basically a small scale production. Yep. Um it's going to help us be run if run everything more efficiently get an idea of what it's going to look like at the R&D stage rather than at the production stage. Um, it's going to help us be uh, a lot more efficient. It's going yep. to help us um, really get a good feel for for the client's product, how it's going to go out, how what's going to look like on the shelf, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, gonna, it's going to change everything here, I think. No, I'm I'm so, super excited. Yeah. I can't wait to bring you know our customers, <laughs> yes, into that lab. Yes, yes. Like like some of the people that we work with, bringing them in, um, letting them kind of see like all the all the details, all the toys. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's going to be yeah. nuts. But I mean, for you guys, that's huge in terms of like you know capability, mm -hmm. capabilities in general for contract manufacturing, and find you know spots that can be improved, to right? Improve our capabilities, and that's that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, so kind of, kind of like leaning into that, kind of like what we were just talking about, like it, it's so funny. Um, I literally had somebody where we, we run their product with monk fruit only. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to let us drop monk fruit completely for stevia. Mm -hmm. But 
he's just going to place a PO. He said, I don't need to try the samples. I love that trust. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good, that's, that's another good feeling. Yeah. So, so I, I definitely advised against it. Yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, it's not, <laughs> but at it's... the same time, like it, it's also going to be, because I mean, we've done like 15 flavor profiles for him. Yeah. Like over the course of the past two years. So definitely building that level of trust with a client when they're like, cause, cause I told him, I'm like, look, my R and D team's still going to try it. They're still going to create the physical samples. I'm still going to try it before it leaves our facility. That way yeah. I can ensure that like, this is going to be a good fit for yeah. the marketplace. And that's, that's kind of goes back to getting the feel for the client. Yeah. And I think, you know, you having that good, great relationship with the client is, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy that level of trust yeah. that they have. Um, cause they're, they're also going to be, uh, letting us redo our pre-workouts, uh, their pre-workouts mm. as well. I'm sorry, where they were all natural with just, uh, monk fruit only. And now they're going to let us switch over to stevia. So if you wouldn't mind, let's talk about those two different taste profiles between monk fruit and stevia sure. real quick. Uh, sure. So <laughs> kind of go off on a little thing. Uh, so one thing I enjoy is that th it's a very dynamic industry. Yeah. So our capabilities keep changing. So you might have something that we'd be able to flavor now or that we wouldn't be able to flavor before two years ago. Yeah. That we can absolutely <laughs> nail now. Like Stevia M. Yeah. How big so, of a game changer was that? <laughs> <laughs> it's Stevia without the Stevia. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a game changer. But so to that point, I think we can kind of more match the the monk fruit with a stevia now that we have better t better technologies better insights better um you know better material yeah like the stevia m but what do you what do you think in terms of like oh, so you try something <clears throat> with with monk fruit only right what what's that typical tongue feel experience everything like that versus it's a very, it's a very mild sweetener yeah uh, it's very mild. Uh, it's very smooth. Uh, it has kind of a maple taste in a way, almost like a syrup taste. Um, and whereas your stevia is kind of like a, you know, real punch you in the face yeah. kind of um, sweetness uh, with that, you know, typical stevia metallic back end taste. Um, and I think that's kind of turns a lot of people off with stevia mm -hmm. is that it's kind of rough on the back end yeah um but yeah we're we're definitely capable of doing um kind of a a, a side by side match to those yeah so so some sometimes like there's for me it's like misinformation um a few years ago the stevia wave hit and it hit hard i mean yeah. it was almost like overnight for us like people switching over from sucralose to stevia yeah how big of a challenge did that present big yeah big challenge yeah <laughs> uh so it goes back to client expectation mm -hmm. um i think uh you want you have something that's sucralose sweet so it's something that's very very smooth very um very sweet very you know a good ex good flavor experience because it's like what 10 times more or uh, it kind of depends on the stevia you use. Yeah, uh, it's about twice as about twice as strong. Yeah, give or take. And cheaper. And <laughs> cheaper. Yeah, definitely cheaper. Uh, but then again, you know, it doesn't look as good on a label. Right. As stevia. Um, so we so our challenge there was to try to find uh, find a way to kind of mimic the sucralose without having that stevia back end back end yeah and then enter stevia m yeah so but then that creates obstacles in and of itself as yeah. well because now stevia m is incredible four times ex expensive. exactly yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> um actually I'll, I'll give you an example from this week yeah um we got um enzymatic stevia in um our uh, our project manager for our department brought yeah. it in um, and it's very close to Stevia M and it's about half as expensive as Stevia A. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we're, we're going to, we're going to try that. Um, and then we're going to, if it works, we're just going to go in really hard on it. So dude, I'm, I'm just um, so surprised you haven't like, so, so I got messed with 
by Mike Choi, okay. right? When I first started working here, um, just so he could give me a clear picture and a clear understanding of what he went through in terms of R and D, he would bring me into the lab and make me try the individual materials before uh -huh. he started on one of my projects. Yeah, he did that to me too. Yeah. You got to pass that on. You can't let that fall off with the new salespeople. Yeah, I know. I'm not. I'm not uh, carrying on on the legacy too well. Because <laughs> I mean, there. But it, but it gave me that clear picture to correlate and relate to the client to the best of my best of my ability. Right. So like, I would yeah. go in there, and he would pick out literally like the worst thing in that formula, <laughs> put it on like a you know one of the little wooden sticks, a little popsicle stick, and then just. He'd be like, here, here, try this. I'm not flavoring it until you try it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that'd be fun. But then, but then it does kind of give you that gauge of, you know, experiencing that, having the knowledge of that for future projects, because some of those ingredients that I had to taste, you are never going to forget. <laughs> no, you're not. So I definitely, I, you gotta, you gotta bring that back. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'm going to request that. We're going to get Jenna, um, some like spoonfuls of like, Tia cream, dynamine, some herbals and botanicals. You ready for that, Jenna? No. <laughs> ah, you're ready. Come on. Really uh, that's, a, that's a fun little game. <sighs> but it, it, for me, it's just like I, as much as I hated it during the moment, like I'm, I'm so glad that like I was able to have that experience with Mike because yeah. uh, again, for now having some more of that knowledge of being able to tackle a project versus like, what do you mean it doesn't taste good? Yeah. You know? And that's, yeah, that's, it goes, goes back to kind of gives sales kind of a way to kind of guide their client. Right. You know? And, and that's huge. Cause that's that, yeah. again, that's another like angle or facet <clears throat> of like what we do in our job description that we want to be able to guide them from start to completion, mm -hmm. make it seamless make the best product that we absolutely can provide the best customer experience that we absolutely can mm -hmm. that way everybody gets you know everybody gets a win on yes. on creating a product that is just efficient for the marketplace in mm -hmm. general so Definitely. before we wrap up ryan is there anything else that you want to touch base on real quick um no not really i mean i think uh we're uh there's a lot of change right now yeah. going on um i think um there's a lot of uncertainty um, but we're, we're excited. We're excited to move, move forward with it. Yeah. We'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely be bringing you back to kind of just me to like go through literally a walkthrough. Definitely. So, so I'm glad that we're able to kind of bring you in, talk about this, the R and D experience, your background and everything like that. Um, but I think that like the next time you and I sit down, it'll kind of just be doing exactly what we just talked about with a powdered yeah. formula. We do it in the lab. So yeah. I'm excited for yeah. that. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Ryan. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks. it. As always, I have to thank our podcast team for making this possible and putting everything together from start to finish. So thank you. Thank you.